There's got to be a mute button on the remote. Woo! Yeah! We got no time to waste, brother. Let's get into it. All right. Let's get into it, you said? Yeah, let's, let's dive in. Oh. Whoa. Yup. Yup. <laughs> Found it. Hold on. It's working. It's going to be a lot of silence this episode. A lot of staring. Have a seizure. Is this one of the ones where you look at the wall after? Uh, no. Oh, That's ridiculous. okay, it actually does make the wall look crazy. Whoa! <laughs> I, yeah, I think if you stare at the center for a while and look at the wall, it, yeah. yeah. Okay, right. okay, let's all try that for one full minute. Is my mic on? Do you hear me? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you sure? Do you hear yourself? Yeah, uh, yeah. Do you want bit. your headphones up? Hey, turn my headphone up. I just want to make sure I'm heard. <laughs> yeah, I heard. No, yeah. Takes. Loud and clear. <laughs> We got the hypnotic visuals going, guys, and we're back in the lab. Um, do so do we want to start with just staring at the hypnosis for a little bit? Is this a one camera setup? Yeah, we're uh, the show has um, a lot's changed since you guys have been on the show. Production value's <laughs> gone down for real. They took his budget away. Uh, um, yeah, it's been. Uh, oh. It's been what months since you guys have been on the show, Mary? You were oh well, I guess we should say sorry. I'm a, I'm a little. This is the sweatiest I've ever been doing the show. <laughs> yeah, Disgusting. Yeah. I know I look like a sweaty You're freak. A pig. I'm, tra- <laughs> I'm a- <laughs> and uh, and it's sweat and I'm sweating. And uh, I should say today we have uh, Mary Nearhouse and Ben Servita back on the show. Yeah. Yes, and we're very excited to have them back and. Yes, we should address the obvious for you guys, because I know you don't listen to the show. Whoa, and, uh, or watch it. Or watch it. <laughs> yeah. I listen Let's to make a that lot clear. of the show. <laughs> uh, More of an early Hunter Games radio. <laughs> More fan. of the Ann Arbor era. Once the budget went down, I was like, I'm out. <laughs> this low effort bullshit. Well, actually, that's I'm glad you said, because the budget's now going back up. I don't know if you saw last week's episode, the Mary episode. Of last course week. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> but we did have the first. I was watching Conan. <laughs> Real podcast. Yeah, Larry David. <laughs> I was watching a real <laughs> podcast. Um, uh, the last episode we did have our first sponsor, and I don't know if you guys, neither of you guys, are really freelance workers. No. You guys both work at. Uh, well, okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. You were you were the first guest in the in the Los Angeles studios, Mary. Mm-hmm. Yep. Ben, you were on not too long after, maybe just a week or two after. Yeah. Probably. And uh, when you guys were on the show, yes, the great Ariel Berman was uh, setting up a beautiful multicam setup. Uh, the great Katie Fitzgibbons was, uh, you know, along for the ride, producing the show, helping it be a little cleaner. And um, one thing we talked about in your episode was you were unemployed when you came right. on the show. I was going to say big yeah. difference is like everyone got employed. <laughs> yeah, except for me. <laughs> uh, and you were you were not. You just tore your ACL. <laughs> I got. <laughs> <laughs> got injured, uh, lost a job actually. Uh, but uh, the the fact of the matter is, despite losing those pieces, and obviously they're on to bigger and better things. The show did, you know, I don't, you know, I I don't, you know, it's a semantic game, causation versus correlation. But you came on the show unemployed, mm-hmm. and very quickly one, one after week. one week after yeah. your appearance on the show. Employed in the entertainment industry. Pretty sure yeah. it's not causation. Well, you were on the show uh, without a job in entertainment. You came on the show not long mm. after your yeah. appearance on the show, a job in the entertainment industry right. as well. And yes, I mean, you're building a case. I mean, we can go back. I will say. Yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's hard to, you know, really. <laughs> Caught that <laughs> the corner of my... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just watching this. Just hold on one second. <laughs> <laughs> um, we do have hypnotic visuals. Did I say that already? We got hypnotic visuals going. We have the classic black and white swirly on the TV. And it's working. And it's nice. Oh. It does kind of lull me into a sense of, I don't even know, guard, like walls down, you know, mm-hmm. guard down. Anyways, um, yes, I couldn't pay anyone to be on the show or to work for the show, which is... Oh, do we get paid now? No. Oh. Um, but I was going to say maybe you talk to your bosses at your uh, places of work. Maybe if mm. they need... Uh, maybe the payroll system they're using is, like, kind of shitty. Yeah. 
<laughs> maybe you could talk to them about. We can cut maybe a few you could dollars. slide yeah, them Mitchell them Ross's there. email. Tell them the Hunter Davidson Radio Hour sent you. Maybe we can all make some money together. All right. Okay. Let's get it up. Get that bread. Uh, but I didn't come here, guys. I didn't come here to be a corporate shill. You know. <laughs> okay. I was worried. I did. You did. Do, yeah. you have, do you have a plug? Do you have a corporate plug? You want to McKinsey? Your <laughs> McKinsey Consulting. Firm? I'm working at a law firm. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing there? Fairly I'm working at Cooper Cooper and uh, Cooper Ballsworth. <laughs> oh no! I'm trying to put people in jail. Their fast. slogan is "How much are your balls worth?" <laughs> nice, dude. Yes. Um. Thank you, audience. So yeah, yes. I'm at I'm at Lockheed Martin, but mm. we don't we don't need to plug anything. That's you a guys good already one. know. You guys know what we're fucking yeah. doing. I yeah. had a buddy the other Being day. It. I won't say his name. He initially he was one of my best friends. That's all I'm gonna I say. He might say listen to this. I'm not going to say his name because of the story that I'm going to tell. He got a job initially at BP Oil, and he said they're actually they're actually doing a lot in the environmental sustainability sector. <laughs> They've got a whole department. And I said, dude, you don't have to justify your job to me. I'm really proud of you. He's worked very hard. I'm very proud of you for having this job. You know, I had a couple of chuckles at him saying that, but I didn't care. I think he should have to justify well, his job. He said, well, just wait. <laughs> he said that they, they're doing a lot of work in the environmental sector. He didn't say if it was good or bad. <laughs> the implication was they they created a whole new department at at BPX to tackle the problems they created basically. Right. But then so then that was I think an internship that ended and he was maybe going to work there but then he got another job offer Halliburton. And he said, "But hey, What's hey, Halliburton. They're primarily known for making missiles, a uh, big <laughs> military contractor, but he said it's no Lockheed Martin. It's it's Lockheed <laughs> Martin's the big biggest dog. competitor." Uh, and he said, but hey, I'm in the civilian space travel sector. I'm not, I have nothing to do. And again, I said, man, listen, I'm proud of you. You don't have to justify Wait, it. this is the same friend? <laughs> yeah. Your yeah. same friend went to BP Oil <laughs> and then a missile creator? <laughs> in the, just civil, have, in like, the civil, civil space department. Yeah, right. Because, you know, civilians are going into space. And we got to get to Are those Mars. things even related or was he just like trying to find? Well, he works in supply chain. So, so there's supply. He, he worked in the supply chain aspect of both of those companies. Got to imagine there's supply chains at other places. At other places, yeah, but they don't pay the big two bucks. Two for two is crazy. But what if you want to make money? You got to yeah. destroy some lives or no, an right. ecosystem. Right. Listen, and I support that. I fucking hate lives. Anyways, that's why I don't have a job. Is because I don't want to contribute to you know. That's why I just do this podcast, which only spreads joy and positivity right mm. to the world. You could try a nonprofit, but. Eh. But I, but there's no tangible you know you throw your money and who knows where your money or time goes who knows who you're actually people who helping need it. well people need the show no my mom actually my mom does need the show <laughs> shout out Mary Servatai the biggest fan of the Hunter probably Davis yeah probably well. unequivocally uh, she's up there with Cash Bleasner as as the biggest fan of the show so shout out to both of them all right uh, we've co- we've covered. What's happened on the show since then? We love Ariel and Katie. Unfortunately, they had to go find a way to survive, um, and they couldn't do the show anymore. So that's why we're back to one camera. We're back to basics, which I kind of like. No? Yeah, it's better. I do like that. It's yeah. bare bones. It's like fucking. Let's just let's just get these riffs off. Yep. Mm-hmm. Anyways, um, Ben, uh, I tried to invite Mary onto the show two or three times in the last month and have been twice. flaked on twice. Flaked wow. on once, ghosted once. Can you talk about what your plans were that were more important? More important, yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't be, no, go hey, ahead. don't be shy. No, please. Uh, My feelings think, won't be what, hurt. The, fir- the first, first one was cleaning. Sunday morning, first, you said yeah. cleaning the house. Yeah, I, I was hungover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hungover, and then I was like, my house and room in particular mm-hmm. are like a mess. I can't live like this. And I was cleaning and then like totally lost track of time. Fine. I and was feeling a little crummy that morning. And yeah, anyways. I have to say I texted Hunter and I was like, I don't know yeah. if I'm going to make it. And he was like, that's okay. I don't feel great. Yeah, and I was I, like, I was kind of having a okay. bad, bad okay. day that day. Then tried to reschedule. Tried to reschedule. <laughs> President's day. And we mm-hmm. tried to do President's, President's day. day shoot. And I just completely forgot. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like that's on... Um, the organization of the hunters. Right. They can send a reminder. Text. We said, we said well, I President's lost Day on like Wednesday, <laughs> and then I didn't hear. I a lost goddamn my producer, word. and I don't know. I can't do everything at once. I'm running the show. I'm fucking <laughs> editing the show. I'm trying to. Right. I have right. a job that I get paid for, <laughs> <laughs> so I wasn't gonna remember. Um, 
She was but, too busy cashing her checks. <laughs> Climbing up the ladder of the industry. Yeah. Um, but I didn't bring that up to be mean. I, d- I hope that didn't come across that way. Because we... <laughs> well, well, we do have a lot to talk Are about. You okay, Mary? Yeah, I will be. <laughs> no way you're upset. <laughs> <laughs> um, we do. This is going to be... Okay, so... Uh, we're back. I'm you know back in the seat, back on the mic. Uh, trying to bank episodes. I'm trying to get into banking episodes because, re- whoa, Ugh, scary. Uh, sorry. There's an ad on our hypnosis video. God okay. damn it! Why it's aren't we? Why aren't we on my YouTube Premium account, guys? No ads. YouTube Premium. Subscribe to YouTube Premium to get two months of YouTube music for free. Bro, with no job, got YouTube <laughs> Premium. Make it crazy. Make sense. That's crazy. <laughs> Um, we, so this is, uh, more or less an emergency recording, um, in the term, in the, in the sense that Justin's it, getting a haircut, Justin's going to get a haircut and let's, <laughs> let's all take haircut guesses. Episode. <laughs> uh, let's all take guesses on how we think, uh, Justin's haircut's going to turn Ooh, out. That's a good, that's a good You think segment. he's doing like two on the sides? Uh, yeah, you think he's fade. getting buzzer? You think he's going all the way to two on the sides? I don't know. What do you think? No. <laughs> I think it's a clean up. I think it's, it's going to look up. nice. You think it's going to look clean? My boy comes back with good haircuts. He usually does come back looking fresh. Yeah. I feel like I'm not going to notice a difference. Yeah. <laughs> Are you not, not going to say anything but when you see him? Probably not. <laughs> oh, my God. I notice. I notice Justin's haircuts. <laughs> yeah, I do, I do too. He, he does, it's just a little bit sharper, and he looks good. Yeah. You know, he looks I good notice, all the time. I notice all little changes about him. I notice when he puts on or loses weight. <laughs> I immediately comment on it. <laughs> you track that in your journal? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess we just. You did not miss Mike with, on that one. <laughs> burp with no sorry's on this podcast. <laughs> I am. The production I have, is really going down. <laughs> the line is so. The bar is so low. <laughs> what I, do you mean the bar is low? The bar. To, you're just burping and continuing <laughs> on like nothing happened now. You know, it's good that you're here to call me up because one of the usually when I get messages from fans of the show, it's like we love what you're. Yes, I have a few. I have arguably dozens, My actually, mom. if you can believe I that. I believe it. <laughs> you're great at this. Chill. Thank you. <laughs> I'm a fan. Uh, and, you know, uh, by far and large, the feedback I get is great job on her. Nice work with this episode. Keep up the great work. Love the guests. Love how you make everyone feel so comfortable. What else sharing would on they the show. say? Well, I'm getting to it. If you let me fin okay. it, <laughs> okay. I'm just like you're uh, like, oh, I'm getting the compliments. biggest critique like, yeah. is, God damn it, if I have to listen to you burp into the microphone <laughs> one more time, <laughs> I'm never gonna listen to the, the show again. <laughs> and frankly, I don't have enough. Uh, the base, the fan, the core audience isn't enough to lose anybody from burping. Mm. So that's where we're at. Um, anyways, the reason that I wanted to get Mary Nearhaus on the show for the last two weeks is because, uh, while I was laid up in recovery, you know, you're trying to find good shows to watch and actually, uh, Mary, you've been a huge Band of Brothers fan yeah. for years. Yeah. And, uh, my dad is a huge fan of the show, so I caught episodes with him as a kid, never watched it start to finish until a few weeks ago, me and Ben had a Band of Brothers weekend where oh, we watched yeah. all 10 hours in like that two and an a awesome half weekend. days. Can, uh, let, let's, and let's just talk about that Yeah, let's, well, yeah. I, well, that's, oh, yeah, please, I want to start by breaking we into that. got home. It was like, I think it was like a half day of work for yeah. me. It was like a Friday half day. We got home. Like, uh, you know, just Hunter's like, I think Justin wasn't here that weekend. Yeah. Uh, you know, Hunter's leg. So we were on the couch. We were like, I don't know. Just fucking throw on like some a Band of Brothers. I've never seen that. Yeah, we watched a Band of Brothers. Yeah. And like literally like. Six hours straight for the rest of the day, we were just <laughs> drinking beers and consuming nonstop World War II. Like that's an insane way to take in yeah. the scope of the war against the Nazis in yeah, all its know, gore. The and biggest atrocities in human history, ins- arguably. Insane things that it did to my brain, but it was it was, it was lit. It, it was, was yeah. It, it it was like a uh, you know a cognitive experience mm. to to right. turn the lights off in this room and and you know go to the European theater yeah and i do i do have to mention that i have i have told you before that one of my celebrity crushes is ron livingston and you've been like that's crazy captain winters no which one oh no he's the alcoholic one (laughs) he's the friend he's the friend the the, his winter's best friend oh nixon louis nixon nixon the one who looks like the guy in uh, office space he is the guy (laughs) in office space (laughs) (laughs) yeah that's ron livingston (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> the whole time watching that show, like, he looks like the this guy from Office Space. <laughs> well, uh, I think one of the re- one of the things that made Band of Brothers so cool for us watching it twenty years later 
was seeing all of the like straight up A list actors today. Jimmy Fallon. <laughs> Jimmy Fallon. Oh, I forgot Jimmy Fallon. Fallon that was actually like, Fallon. Like, yeah, Fallon was the one of the guys though that completely shattered the right. the suspension of disbelief. Though. Right. Did right. you feel that way? <laughs> Dude. Yes. Like yeah. when Andrew no. Scott showed up, I was like, "Holy shit, Andrew Scott!" But I still bought him as a private. I still yeah. bought Tom Hardy when he showed up. Well, I would have this... to argue that Andrew Scott is a better actor than Jimmy. Uh, 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 yeah. uh, <laughs> I'm hard disagreeing with where this conversation is going. <gasps> Jimmy Fallon appearing. Was like Iron Man showing up. I was freaked. <laughs> I was hyped. I, it had me thinking like maybe we're too hard on Jimmy Fallon. I was like, in that's terms of so, what? Do you it's think just we're awesome to see Jimmy Fallon in a war show? Do you think as a society we're too hard right, on I Fallon? Look up who else I wouldn't was, die on that hill. That would not be my hill to die. In this. <laughs> yeah, second, I would love to get a list of the guest for stars. For a second, I was like, stars. you know, he's got charisma. It's fun to see him appear. Yeah, I mean, I, I honestly, I think of of the, I mean, and this is a quick pivot. Uh, I think Jimmy Fallon is like a, a palatable like that's the whole thing that's the whole reason he has the tonight show right it's because he's like more or less palatable to everybody yeah mm-hmm. which like you know he, i don't think he's anything special to like comedy nerds but I, he's kind of right. fun yeah i like him more than james corden yeah yeah anyways back so to true. band of brothers <laughs> um uh who else who else is guest starring i feel bad being on my phone it's fine do, do we can we uh um, yeah, I'm trying to go off dome. Oh, I mean, I was Neil McDonough. Great. Love him. Fucking great. I saw him at AMC Grove. Really? Uh, Seeing what? No, he was like in a movie and they did oh. like some premiere thing. Oh. And I was just going to see a different movie and walk past and I was like, oh my God, he was in Band of <laughs> <laughs> I unfortunately crazy. knew him for the longest time as like the, the main villain in Arrow season two. Mm. Which he was phenomenal in. He was very chilling. But then, to, yeah, to see him in Band of Brothers was... <laughs> Just say you get no host. <laughs> uh, um, Tom Hardy. Yeah. We already brought him oh, up, yeah. but yeah. Uh, <laughs> great. No, he was great. And yeah. the thing that I thought, like, uh, the reason that we brought up Band of Brothers first is because uh, in the last few months, Masters of the Air has come out. And what I think Band of Brothers did... Or it, better than what Masters of the Air is doing is like it just made me feel like it felt so much more real to me. Do, would you agree with that, Mary? Yeah, I also. Um, I'm assuming you guys haven't seen the Pacific. Just one episode. Okay. Johnny it's, Bernthal. Yeah, it's he's great. It's not. It's it's no Band of Brothers. Yeah. Um, but I I don't think anything can be. Do you still have it above Masters of the Air right now? <laughs> Do you, do you think nothing can That's be above Band of Brothers or no war show? No be, war show. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was about to Please. defend Mad No, Man. no. I'm, yeah. I was a genuine yeah. question. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was great. Yeah, I think Band of Brothers is above Mad Men, but I don't want to get into that. Really? Um, did you finish Mad Men? Yeah. Did you put Band of Brothers above Mad Men? No. I did really love Band of Brothers. I, I really did love it. I would... I would not agree with that. I, I do need to I watch would take Mad issue Men, with that. <laughs> I would personally, I would. I would like, bro, that rubs me the wrong so, way. So, so I think, yeah, we want to get into like uh, our thoughts and feelings on Master of the Air, Master especially the Air. Ca- compared a little to Band of Brothers, because mm-hmm. it is it's Spielberg, Tom yes. Hanks, like, and so we're gonna try to avoid spoilers. Ben hasn't seen the show; he might want to watch it eventually. And it's a uh, show that's coming out right now. We're gonna now. talk about Ma- Masters of Air while I'm here. Just briefly, Just man. Then we're gonna get to it's Argyle. Not, it's, uh, season, oh the whole my! I haven't seen Argyle either. Okay, well, God, that damn it. Why don't we talk he about hasn't some either. Interests. Have you seen Madam Web? No. Oh my God! <laughs> Why don't we talk Why about? Been, uh, I've been watching episode. Buffy the Vampire Slayer. <laughs> Fine, we, we can talk, talk about Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Let's see what, what else I've been consuming. <laughs> oh my God! It's Just like, watch. Big talk Little about sound. Talk about sound of freedom. Uh, we did watch the first fifteen minutes of Sound of Freedom. We did check out Sound of Freedom. We watched first fifteen minutes of Sound of Freedom. We were uh, we were drunk and high on this couch. And we were like, let's throw on Sound of Freedom, <laughs> <laughs> and we started it. And I don't I don't think we didn't watch the whole thing. I don't think the, the movie stays this good, but it starts out, <laughs> and we're expecting a goofy watch. And we're like, this is artistically made. This these are interesting creative choices. To be fair, made. I knew what I was getting into when we put on Sound of Freedom. I because because I've had extensive conversations with friends that were like, it's actually a really fucking good movie, and I was like, I believe that it's a well constructed movie. I just personally don't have the. I don't really want to see what it's all about. You don't have personally. the empathy for little children who are going through horrible things. You don't care. 
<laughs> That's how you feel about the, the little children. <laughs> <laughs> now we've sat, you see we've sapped all the energy by talking about okay, sound of can we freedom. go back to master there then let's circle back to ben, ben really quick and okay you I'm know what get a beer. so briefly <laughs> we're, we're gonna talk generally about I'm gonna the go get a haircut <laughs> i'm gonna go get a haircut well we can talk about uh, okay oh, okay hold on hold on because masters of the air does star austin butler what are your thoughts on austin butler did you see elvis jury's still out <laughs> jury's still out for me <laughs> did you see elvis i saw elvis and so He's good in it, but he was good in it until I saw Priscilla. And then I was like, I think Jacob Elordi's a better Elvis. Better Elvis. Wow. Fine. I, I have no problems with Austin Butler. Jury's still out for me. What about Barry Keoghan? Great. He's great. Okay. So I think you might, li- <laughs> I think you might, like, <laughs> I think you might like Masters of the Air. Yeah. What do you think about Up that? To episode I, three. I probably will, but I got... I got vampire slaying to watch right now. Okay, well, okay. So, all right, Mary. Before let's just satiate Ben before we dive into Masters of the Air. Masters yeah. What of do the you want to say about Buffy? Let's talk Buffy. No, no, I don't. I don't want to talk about it. No, 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 no. no, no. Joss Whedon. New. Joss Whedon. I'm still new to the show. You like the writing? No, I don't want to talk about it. You like the universe? Come on, man. Really? I like it. It's a. It's a really. <laughs> it's a great show. It's campy horror and teen love triangles. <laughs> uh huh. You know. I uh-huh. love that. It's 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 teen drama by day. Right. It's vampire slaying by night. That's an o- target that's audience. Probably maybe high school the girls. awesomest premise for a show I could ever conceive. Wait, yeah, pitch it again. Teen, teen love triangles by day, vampire slaying by night. Yeah, that's, that's nice. That's sick. It's a lit combination. That's nice, dude. Um, all right, that's Buffy then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's all. Awesome. I'm gonna go pee. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. Now we can spoil Masters of the Air. Okay, so let's talk Masters of the Air. Okay, so you, there are moments in Master There, and the the general casting setup seems to be that they are trying to make it very Band of Brothers. Yes, they are trying to make Calm Turner into the, w- the Winters. Winters and the, or no 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 other way around. No, Austin to make, Butler's. They're trying to make Winters. Buck Winters and they're trying to make Bucky, Bucky Nixon. Nixon. Which I know that that is really what their names were in real life. I think it's an insane, like they should probably. I think it's crazy but to have your really two main He doesn't really go by Bucky, does he? They call it's him Egan Buck a lot. and he's Egan, yeah. Yeah, they call him Egan. And, um, and they call him, yeah, I guess. Yeah, I guess, we, yeah, yeah, I guess that's an unfair he's, criticism. Cal Turner's doing a, a great job. I think part of it is we are very familiar with these actors. Yeah. Which I think when you see Band of Brothers, especially yeah. 20 years later, when that was not like the era that we knew those actors in. Yeah. Those guys were their characters. Yeah, but when you see Buck Club and you see it, that's Austin Butler in a right. flyboy jacket. Right. Which is why I but I so yeah, so I do think the uh I mean it's hard because I, I do think like the I'm I'm more bought into the realness of the of the other crews of cause now mm-hmm. have, did you see this week's episode? I did not. I haven't seen it okay, yet. Okay, so we won't get into it yeah. too much, but but they're focusing more on Rosie's crew. Mm-hmm. The uh, and I'm just we're just gonna say right. there might be some light spoilers from Masters of the Air, so you know, little, skip a, and there's a little bit of nepotism little because little Spielberg's son, right? Have, wait, did we? Who, I think he's he's uh, he's Rosie, yeah, okay, I think he is. Damn, okay, he's Pretty good, sure. yeah, he's good then, yeah, he's good. I didn't really, I kind of thought when, he, when he'd show up, it would kind of be obvious that he was Spielberg's kid. I thought it would be like a coach's kid starting quarterback situation. I mean, he, he's good, but it def, it does feel like you're like, okay, this guy just shows up and now, like, now we're following, we him. really have to care about him. Yeah, and but okay, so I will say the thing the th- I was initially put off because like you just lose so like you get and that was part of the thing in Band of Brothers you get it you think you're following this guy now dead by the end of the episode right. and that is to the case even more in this show but that's also reflective of real life they were right. losing men at a incomprehensible it, clip I, I think also I mean part of my struggle with Master of the Air is like in Band of Brothers you. You you spend a lot of time with those characters and you you're following them, and you're up close and you're yeah, watching them go the through. What'd you say? I think I just clogged the toilet. I'm being serious. <laughs> <laughs> Are you gonna fix it? You clogged. <laughs> Dude, I have a uh, I have the uh, I bought the gun. I bought a plunger gun because my knee was fucked up, right? So I couldn't like get. Leverage How to plunge by toilet. How often are you guys clogging the toilet? This, fir- this was the first time that it happened, <laughs> and it, and it was bec- and I don't want to make excuses, but I do think it was because of the medicine that I was on. Okay, so now you feel fucked up for making fun of me. I thought I, I don't at all. It's just a actually. pee clog. It's, so, <laughs> it's, it's gonna lower. over calcified urine clogged the toilet, dude. That's I have strong, fucked up, strong bro. Year. That's so fucked up. 
Um, okay, sorry to cut you off. You were saying the Band of Brothers hits hard because we're with them for so long. Not even for so long. Or you can be with them for an episode, but I think it's also that they're like, like, I don't know, I feel like a little bit of the Air Force quality of it takes you away from seeing them as like people. Being in the foxholes with yeah, them. Yeah, being in the foxhole, you're like seeing, and I don't know, I kind of also feel like everyone looks the same. Yeah. On no, Masters I'm having that. Air, hu- I'm so having I'm like, a huge wait, problem with who that. Who is this guy? Who do I care about? Yeah. So it's like really like there's like four people that I recognize, like Barry Keoghan, yeah, Austin Butler, yeah. who I didn't even care that much about him. Like, no. I I mean obviously like I haven't seen the most recent episode, so I don't know what happened, but like, <laughs> 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 motherfuckers making a Snapchat video, shaking his head, um, <laughs> <laughs> and. I just, yeah, I was like, okay, I care about, like, the four actors that yes. I recognize. Like, I love um, Crosby. Okay, yeah. Crosby's having it. Uh, and I knew before I even watched the show, I sing, I, we were talking yeah, about yeah. the show. Episode I sing, one or two, you were locked in on I Cros. hadn't even seen the show. And yeah. I sent you, you were like, have you seen it? And I was like, I haven't started it yet, but I know I'm going to love this guy. And then sent you a picture of Cros. And you sent it, and I said, I don't think this guy is going to, I don't think he has the sauce. But then He's he He's narrating up. the whole fucking yeah, show. Yeah, I know. And I didn't realize that until yeah. episode two. yeah. Um, but I love him. I, and yeah, I, I overall, <laughs> we're gonna move on quickly. <laughs> I'm wrapping it up, man. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, oh. <laughs> this man cannot consume media. Overall, <laughs> he actually would be very confused by all the characters in Masters of the Air. Dude, he would not I, be able to keep them straight. When we watched Brothers, I actually was asking Hunter like a question every minute. And I couldn't keep track of who everyone was. I was like the whole. T- I also don't know anything about history, so I, the whole time I was like, "Who's that? Wait, what's going on? Who's yeah. where are we going? Where are we?" <laughs> yeah. Which I had fun because yeah. yeah. Which I feel like is going to be a bigger problem in Masters of the Air, just because like they're flying over shit and you're yeah. like, "Wait, who are you? Where are you? You're all wearing the same thing, and half the time they have masks on." You don't yes. know who's in what plane, and then a plane goes down. You're like, who is in that plane? I don't. What, right. What's who the happening? fuck did we just lose? And and you don't really feel like you've lost them. Yes. As much because you're not really watching people lose anyone because that's also what Band of Brothers was doing. It's like exactly. You're in the foxhole. You lose someone. You in the just foxhole, lost your brother. You're watching this guy who is next to you, like. And yeah. Like it's just. And and that and okay. So you're touching on something that I felt heavy that that was a disconnect for me between the two shows. And I was talking to my dad about it, who is a big, he was in the Air Force and was like super into World War II Air Force history. And he was watching the show and he was like, I agree with you, but you like, you have to realize, I think they might be doing it on purpose just because the nature of like being in the Air Force at that time was like, if you were 22, you were the oldest guy there mm-hmm. because like everyone else was dead and they just brought it like. Every week they brought in a new three hundred. Right, I do. I do think olds. like in the the last episode I saw, or maybe it was the episode before, where they're they're talking about celebrating like that guy doing twenty five missions, yeah. and they're kind of just like, no one has ever done that. Yeah. Half the guys that we're seeing are like new guys, like we don't recognize these guys, and they tell the new guys who come in like make it to eleven missions, and they're like, why? And they go, oh, because you beat the odds. Yeah. You're not yeah. done. You've yeah. just made it halfway you just, through. You probably will make it because luck's on yeah. your side. I really, I just really like your dad making like very beautiful and incisive points about like the filmmaking behind the show. <laughs> he just is, like comes in with like, well, you have to remember, and then like a very good. Well, he's super hard. His complex his thing. neighbor when they were when he was growing up, uh, his neighbor was a B seventeen pilot in World War Two, flew seventeen missions, wow. and was like, so he, those stories he that he told him like fucking, yeah, influenced him a lot. Anyways. Uh, I was saying I I have I come from a family of I don't think anyone in my lineage has been in war. <laughs> I come from a yeah, from not a warrior clan. <laughs> no, God, no. <laughs> that's fine. That's good. Uh, anyways, okay, wrapping it up. Tuskegee Airmen episode probably coming soon. Mm-hmm. Very excited for that. Very excited. Uh, ben, what do you know about the Tuskegee Airmen? Where's Tuskegee? Don't. All right, we'll move on. Okay. It's something with snow. <laughs> It's the first, uh, it's a group of black fighter pilots in World War II from Tuskegee, Alabama. That's cool. So now you feel like a piece of fucking shit. Yeah. All right, and we're back. <laughs> and, and now this section of the show, Ben, this section is for me and you, okay? Yeah. I want you to lock <laughs> in. Well, no, I'm telling you. Mary's going to be part uh, of it too. Okay. But uh, listen, I didn't see Argyle. I didn't see Argyle. Okay, you didn't see Argyle, but we both saw the Argyle trailer for months. 
And it was the and we both said, awesome. God fucking damn it, this movie looks like the cinematic event of the fucking century. Damn yeah. straight. We couldn't go. Our buddy Justin that's getting a haircut right now. Shout out to haircuts. Shout out to Mr. Haircut. Haircut. Oh, haircut. Uh, burr, burr, burr. He loved the movie so much. I I did, <laughs> didn't. Um, I had a good time. <laughs> I had a good time. Uh, uh any I uh I didn't want to I didn't want to I was uh Sorry, one sec. No, take your time. Sorry, just give me a second. No, it's cool. You're just the he's host working, of a show on a about bird. talking. You're just grinding you the can't show. Can't talk. Uh, you you guys went in a big group. You rented out a whole row of the theater. Mm-hmm. You rented out a whole row. You guys <laughs> yeah. each bought a ticket. In yeah, a row. we bought. <laughs> you rented out a row of the theater, but about twenty of you showed up, very excited to see Argyle. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I was kind of hoping, just so the fe- so we don't have to waste two hours of our life to go see Argyle, but we still want to know the big zeitgeist pop culture event that everyone's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> we we were hoping that maybe you, someone who saw the movie and lo- didn't love it, loved it, liked it. Um, I liked it. getting to see it with my friends. Yeah, we had so I have to preface this by saying like we had one of the most dead theaters that I've really? ever had. Like, we went to see Madam Web. Yeah. And I feel like our theater It was rocking. Everyone was like laughing. Yeah. It was so fun. It was like, in pops. Yeah. Not a good movie, but when you can laugh yeah. with your fellow a good audience theater members, experience. Yeah. It's great. No, like silent theater. People Damn. were like like the we Argyle were laughing in our row. <laughs> nice. The Matthew Vaughn heads were out, dude. Yeah, like I felt like rude laughing. And Interesting. And that's what I needed yeah. to be able to laugh. Right, because I guess there probably was a big contingent of people that went to see that movie like I'm locked in for the for the next action. I yeah. guess it is but an action I comedy, I, though. I feel like it's probably not for, like, pretentious L.A. movie people. Like, it's yeah. you probably go to a theater in Michigan and, like, there's a bunch <laughs> of happy dads over yeah, there. That, yeah, that was like a, and yeah. 13-year-old Like, boys. I would have made my parents go see that with me when I was, like, 13 or 14. Yeah. Yeah. And there's definitely, like, it. it's, like, I never knew, like, I think my letterbox review, actually, not to, like, bring up letterboxed. But <laughs> what do you mean not to bring up letterbox? Well, I just don't want to be that person who's like, no, plug oh, yeah, your letterbox. And, and letterbox. What's your letterbox at? Uh, Mary at Near Mary, House. Mary Near House. Yeah. Go follow Mary on Letterbox. You guys should. I'd what are your top four on Letterbox? Um, when Harry Jesus met Sally, Christ. say anything. Uh, Iron Ponyo. Claw. I know Iron this Claw. Is <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. When Harry met Sally, say anything. Ponyo. And then I think it's probably like Harold and Maude or Make Way for Tomorrow. Or Mine's Iron Claw, Marie Antoinette. Uh, Ice Merchants, which was an animated short um, in, nominated for the Oscars last year. And Is that then, the lobster? Uh, I see. No. Uh, <laughs> Ken Burns Civil War documentary. Let's uh, go. <laughs> let's go. That was we, way off. We were, we, we were wa- uh, yeah, never mind. I almost brought up a non sequitur that would have been just like, holy shit, why did he even fucking bring that up? So, okay, like, so good I guess I shouldn't even fucking talk no, about it. Let's just move it? on. Let's, let's just go. move on. Well, I was going to talk about how we were watching the John Oliver uh, piece on Clarence Thomas last weekend, and Ken Burns got brought up, and Ben didn't even freaking know who Ken I Burns was. I know who Ken was. Burns is? You're confusing me for someone else. I know who Ken Burns is. Who's Ken Burns? He's the guy that makes <laughs> extremely long documentaries about that's subjects actually true. of history. That's actually true. That's actually true. Ben, I know sorry. Who Ken Ben's Burns right. is. I, I you want to know what just happened? I will what? say when I finished. I just confused Ben for my sister. <laughs> <laughs> it's because you guys act so similar. I'm, I'm, I'm taking a vow of silence. That. <laughs> I will have to say when I finished so Band sorry. of Brothers. Actually, I'm so sorry about I finished that. Band of Brothers I'm and so I was sorry like, to bring that accusation. Watching Ken Burns' World War II documentary after Band of Brothers, I feel like is a pretty logical you next think? step. But kind of a step down in like pace and what you're getting Oh, there, certainly. Right? Yeah. Uh, have you seen Ken Burns' baseball? No. <laughs> that's a good one. It's a really good one. Uh, I'm just not that into baseball. No, but that's why I like think it's kind of good for that because it, it kind of highlights just like how fucking weird it Have was. Have you seen his started. national parks? No, but I did watch the Civil War one in eighth grade. We did so this good. thing in eighth grade. We did a Civil War simulation. Oh. Where we divided our eighth grade U.S. history class into the North and the South, and one of kid in the class got to be Ulysses S. Grant, and one kid got to be Robert E. Lee. What? I was Ulysses S. Grant, dude. I was, that happened. Yeah. And did you know did Ulysses like is months, his middle name? Dude. No, I don't think. Michigan it is Hiram crazy. Ulysses insane, Grant. Bro. Yeah, dude. One dude was like, "I'm Robert E. Lee." It was yeah. In our class, it was uh, Kaylee. Uh, Fel- uh, not Feltner. Uh, anyways, I, won't, I don't have to. In my in like. my class, I knew a kid who was descended from Robert E. Lee. <laughs> but that's being wow. from Tennessee. <laughs> 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 
Hell yeah, you did, dude. Did you ever, did you ever give you his... Jackson wait, wait, wait. And <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Did he ever, like, give you his take on Robert? Like, did he ever... Oh, he... shit. No, but his last name was Lee. And, like, he was, oh, like, yeah. How, like, how much older is Robert? Like, they, were, they weren't alive at the same time, Another piece right? of the puzzle falls into place. Who was it? Stonewall Jackson and Robert E. Lee? They absolutely were. No, no. Robert E. Lee and... And this kid? Yeah. No. Yeah. No, no, no. No, I know that. No. <laughs> no. No, I know that. Um... Uh, wow, does he ever did awesome. he have like personal like a, a take on it? Yeah. No, I mean I this was in like third grade when I was like I don't even really know who yeah, Robert E. Lee is. Kind of cool, maybe. Even. Um, you and probably he thought was it was like, cool. Yeah, he was like, you know, like <laughs> uh, was cool. technically a president. Robert E. Lee like, actually was. Uh, Wait, this kid said he's technically a president. Well, Robert E. Lee was the president of the Confederate States of yeah. America. Yeah. He's like I'm. Descended from Robert E. Lee. And did you know that the president. Union actually tried to get Robert E. Lee to command their army before they tried to get Ulysses S. Grant? And he said, I could never bear arms against my people of the South. Are you are you making a case for him right now? <laughs> was that meant to be like a... And that was noble of him. No. I'm just stating a fact. Okay. He was a military genius. <laughs> In the way that Hitler was a military <laughs> genius? Oh, Hitler was a military fucking idiot. <laughs> if Hitler doesn't go into Russia in the winter, they probably win that war. So I can't can't talk with you about yeah, stuff. Buddy. You're too, you're too <laughs> yeah, buddy. Welcome to my world. Uh, no, that makes for bad podcasting, though. I would l- much rather talk about the descendants of slave owners that Mary was best friends with. Mary's. I never said best friends. Oh, fuck. What were we talking Guys about? Guys in sketch comedy would not take advantage of a woman. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. We were talking about Argyle at one point. Right. I, it's really hard to. It, it, I don't. I don't <laughs> Move on. Yeah, I don't think I need to recap the whole movie. Let's just um, talk ourselves. I will say yeah. my my letterbox review was that yeah. I predicted every like twist in that movie. You predicted COVID. <laughs> it was 2019. I called it. <laughs> I said someone's gonna eat a fucking bat. LeBron. LeBron. <laughs> I actually knew it was gonna happen. <laughs> I knew we were gonna have to shut down, put on a travel ban. <laughs> yeah. What's your um. Who's your favorite basketball player? <laughs> <laughs> the right out of shit to good talk question. about. Right out of shit to talk no, about. Good question. Um, yeah, I have a great answer. Hunter Davidson pre-injury. Ooh. Fuck, dude. dude it's one of the prime, biggest. It's one of the biggest God, what ifs in bit, sports. For real. Yeah. <laughs> what could his career have been like? Um. When Hunter was, oh, he was deadly on that court. God damn. Yeah. I miss it, man. I remember beating the beating the shit. One, one time, beginner's luck. Oh First time God. we played. I ben know. was making some crazy shots. I rocked him. I've never seen shots. Dude, I just remember like I went, playing I went home and wanting a high five from thinking you. thinking it was like a new me. <laughs> <laughs> it was, dude. I was... <sighs> I was like, this is where your life begins, Ben. <laughs> Start of a new leaf. Um, Wait, so... But you definitely didn't have anything to do with him getting injured. No, I, that's all on me. I'm going to take okay. the full blame for that one. See how brilliant my plan is. <laughs> ben gaslit me. Holy shit. I just got gaslit. Can't believe you slipped on that weirdly placed banana peel. <laughs> on the court. Someone just ate a banana. You slipped on the banana peel. Uh, well, what else do you guys want to talk about if we don't want we don't want to talk about Argyle? You don't want to explain Argyle. Let's talk about something else. Okay, I do have to say about Argyle, there is a moment where they're in a room full full of like crude oil and it all spills on the floor. And then uh Ellie, who's the main girl realizes that like hidden in her mind, she used to be an incredibly good ice skater and she uh, is wearing boots like combat boots and just puts blades like actual like knife blades on the bottom of her boots and then like skates around this oil floor on multiple and kills knives people. Yeah. Wait, what? That sounds lit. This happens in Argyle. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? Um, and it's very CGI. Uh, yeah, every everyone in that movie feels fake. Um, Are you scared of AI? Yeah. You think it, what? Uh, what about it scares you? Um, it's gonna like take over the world, and like it's gonna take our jobs. Yeah. You want to write? Eh. It's gonna do that for you. Yes, I do. <laughs> you think it'll? You actually think it'll be able to get to, get to a point? I haven't seen yes. AI make one good joke yet. Dude, right, it doesn't AI matter if it's is, good. It's also AI is so like in its infant infant steps. Yeah, it's also just like Argyle feels like an AI movie. Yeah, like just that AI could have written it, and it doesn't matter if it's good or not. It's cheap, yeah. so if the movie can get made really cheap, you don't have to pay writers. They're gonna do it. Damn. 
You know what's horrible about this whole AI thing? I'm like, whatever happens is going to happen. Yeah. Like, the, like what is, yeah, it's going to suck. What do you what are we can do about it? Yeah. Do you really think, like, this <laughs> This is the fight out of all of human history? Never once have we been able to, like, stop a technological advancement from advancing. Right. But this is the moment we're all going to stand up and be like, we've gone too far. No, it's going to happen. Yeah. It's probably yeah. going to suck. It's probably going to be bad for us. Yeah. But there Damn, could be some I think benefits. Right. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I think I think that's true. I think that like there, that is a thing. Like that, it's it's very easy to like paint with a broad stroke and just be like, TikTok's ruining attention span. Phones ruining everything. Your life used to be better back on farms and when you could ride horses. And I like that, yeah. like you know, right? You know. Is it really? Though? But also like I like indoor plumbing. So yeah, no, like I yeah. like I like cool most of the technological, technological advances. Yeah. <laughs> I like most of I'm them. A big most fan. of them. I, mean, like, pretty, I like AirPods. Ninety nine percent. Right. Yeah. Fun. Like yeah, nuclear like, bombs. Uh, not a big fan of You got to take the good bomb. with the bad. Yep. I'd have AirPods in exchange for nuclear bombs. I mean, yeah. And you, that's what you, you got. Kinda, you <laughs> 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 Congratulations. Yes. yes. Uh, I mean, but like AI will never be able to make a podcast. Do you think? Yeah, I think it could. I think it could. Okay, probably but already actually, has. This is, okay, no. But has actually, this, this, is my, this is my defense against why I think AI might not work when it comes to art. Okay. It's not that I think it can't do it. It's not that I think it can't make something that feels like that feels true and human. Like I, I think it can. I think it will be able to one day. But I think for me personally, almost all the enjoyment that comes out of watching something, whether it's good or bad, is thinking about like this is so interesting that a human being conceived this. And it's it's about like even when it's bad, being able to say like. It's so you can. It's so yeah. funny that a human like thought this was right. good. This or, came from a human. Yeah. Brain. Or when it's so good, it's like, oh my god, I feel like you get obsessed with like the director. You start to think, holy shit, Richard Linklater knows me. Like, like you, you, you start to get into who's behind it when you love something. And I think that like even if it's really good, even if it's really accurate, there's something like very empty and hard to sink your teeth into when you're thinking like, this didn't come from a. This didn't come from anyone. Like this I, came I, think, from, yeah. I think, I think ultimately that might feel like a novelty. That might not like long term. Again, even if it's great, like you're still watching some kind of like random YouTube video, like th that's not coming from anyone. Like I, right. I feel like or, you want to yeah. know an you're, amalgamation you're of a bunch of yeah. stolen right. things. It means other a artists. lot when it comes from the imagination you, of you, someone like. John Krasinski, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> That's your go-to good director. Uh, well, You're really just, excited the, for when, it. Yeah, it's if. 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 Fuck, it's, sorry. It's when you go, it, that's just, I, I just, when you're like, when someone can just think of that, I'm like, right, when John when Krasinski a director, can when a, imagine yeah, when something when a director as speaks crazy to you. as that. <laughs> From his out of sick, world. twisted mind. Uh, and I, you know, and I, yes, I agree with everything you just said, Ben. And, like, every time I go on Twitter and the, the guys that I see on there being, like, you writers are fucked. You artists are fucked. Look at what AI can do. And then it's just, like, the most boring just, like, right. image. Yeah, they're like, it's just an AI image. made this this animated movie. And I'm like, it and sucks. I could tell. <laughs> it sucks yeah. ass. Obviously. Well, I, and I think there's, like, I think there's a, there is a world where, if done right, where, like, AI can be helpful to writers of, like, you know, if, if I don't if I don't fully exactly, you know, maybe I'm writing a movie about space and I don't fully understand space. It's just a really good like tool yeah. to research. It's a really good tool to learn like how, speech patterns and stuff like that. That that at the end of the day is like a research thing. That's a task thing. Like it's the actual writing and what's interesting is so much more coming from like what human Humans. being is going through. And again, like even if an AI comes up with something that feels true to a human. I still think at like the end of the day when I love something, the first, the very, very first thing I do is like, I want to hear the writer of this talk in an interview. I want to know, I want to know like where he was coming from. I I, I want to like, I, I just feel like I get him. Yeah. And I want to. I want to contextualize yeah, this with I like this becoming artist. a fan of that person. Yeah. I like, like, like really just like admiring a human being. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Like, and, and I can see crypto like AI bros, like not caring about that. But I still think the general public still cares about. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe I'm off. Maybe no. maybe my fingers fallen off the pulse since I moved to LA, dude. No, but I th I right. agree. No, because I agree. Like I think I think yes, it'll it's a fun thing if like there's there's this video that AI made that's like kind of awesome and it's like you throw that on late night. Sure, that's fun. That's a fun yeah. night. 
But I, st- I still think it like crack open some beers with the boys. Yeah, watch like, let's watch this. Let's see what this <laughs> fucking some AI lit bits. Ass AI. But I mean, even like, even I think you watch like, even the funniest AI videos that exist right now. Which again, I know it'll get better. But like, there's still something of like, this is only fun for so long before you start to say like, I right. like it, it. It feels like there's no like, there's no like reason for it existing. There's no like this. This is coming from somewhere. It feels like there feels empty. I don't know. Yeah, I don't, no, I, don't, I, don't know. I totally agree. And I, I'm, I'm open to the idea that like maybe AI will just get that good and that's scary and maybe it will overtake humans. But I, right now, I, it's hard to imagine a world where like you take the human being aspect out of it, even if it's the same product. I, it just it has I, to get yeah. to a point where it's like s- somehow self because right now it's still just sourcing the entire Internet for things it generates. Right. It's just scouring. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. it has to get to a point where it's like somehow creating it itself, which I, I guess I. I don't know. I guess when that happens, it'll be pretty scary. But um, maybe I'll. Man, it could be exciting. Maybe I won't even give a fuck by then. Yeah, I know. But that, I mean, you, you want to get really pretentious and deep and annoying. Like we, ta- we talk <laughs> yeah. about, like, like I have uh, a podcast. Yeah, so. let's, 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 <laughs> so let's get let's into do that. the theories of postmodernism. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And we're talking. We're talking like just the way that like. Oh, you know, I remember all these like film theorists we had to read in their digital cinema class. It was always talking about like a lot of like really good art today is like the recycling. You're like using the art that already exists to make new art. It's like this blank parody. And you talk about like, like even like something like hip hop is like you're using old songs as samples to make new songs. I mean, look at the last Kanye album was like literally it was using Backstreet Boys as like the whole Mm -hmm. song essentially. They were rapping on it. That's a very random example. Uh, Like hyper pop is a huge thing. Well, they'll take like commercial bubblegum pop and like experiment with it. Like, I don't know. I, I, but b- basically what I'm saying is like, even if it's is, even if like, even if AI is only using things that already exist, human beings are also only using things that already exist. To that's make true. Their own right. art. That's interesting. I, so I like, again, like I don't, I don't even think that's what bothers. That's what would bother me about AI, that it's coming from a place that's, it's sampling. already been AI there. is just sampling. It's just, that there's no rough around the edges. If an AI does it, there's no, like you can't see like a little flaw in a movie and, or that like a human touch and be like, that yeah. was like a kind of a mistake. And like, that's what makes it interesting. Hmm. That's what makes it feel like an estate. Right. And I also feel like the individualism of it as well. Like you can watch a movie and be like, okay, I can see like this writer or director's like touch yeah. on this. Mm-hmm. Whereas like when it's AI, if every, <laughs> if every movie became AI, it would be like, they all feel the same. Well, did you see, uh, did you check out, this is me now, the JLo no. interpretive <laughs> How would you even describe it? We, I described it <laughs> to Mary Hep as sort of a blurring the lines between genre, sort of a biopic meets musical meets sort of abstract. Love fantasy. Yeah, just expressionist painting almost. A ridiculous moving CGI painting. music I, yeah, video. I, was say, I honestly didn't know J-Lo had that in her. It's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> Do you wish she didn't? <laughs> I don't know. Honestly, we, we after we checked out the first fifteen minutes of Sound of Freedom, we checked out the opening number of This Is Me Now. Right. And, Crazy back to back watch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys had a great night. And then we immediately went to Impractical Jokers. Yes. <laughs> I'm gonna say the I think you guys three. had a better night than I did. <laughs> it was one for the books for certain. Um, and you know, it, it did seem like she used heavy AI in the opening title crawl. Uh, but oh, you think? <laughs> <laughs> that was the impression you I got. You don't think that came from the mind of J Lo? <laughs> God, dude. You know, I was personally, I was a little hesitant to get into the mind of J Lo. Like, what kind of sick, sick you know, fucked up shit. shits in there? Yeah. I don't want to know. I think, I think just awesomeness. Oh, I think she's cool. It's ben J-Lo doesn't want to get canceled. It's your favorite J Lo song. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, why? I can name yeah. a J-Lo song. Uh-huh. Jenny from the block. Come on. This is ridiculous. Don't help him out. This is horrible. He wasn't even this listening. This is horrible. I can name a J-Lo song. He literally, yeah, I, I know named a J-Lo song. Yeah. He wasn't listening. Name no, it, you name said one. Jenny from the block. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's kind of a softball. Yeah. Give me one other one. I think that might be the only one why I know. Why did I not name J-Lo songs? <laughs> I know J-Lo songs. <laughs> what did she, what, yeah, what What's did she do with the Super Bowl? That's awesome. Mm, horrible. I don't. Yeah, she did the Super Bowl. Backed up Shakira. No, it's kind of. <laughs> but to be fair, come on, dude. Come on, we want to go hit for hit. Shakira. It J-Lo. was the last Shakira, Super Bowl Shakira. before Shakira. the pandemic. We gotta remember this. Come on. Ah, uh, trust me, I remember it. Shakira, Shakira. <laughs> that was good, dude. <laughs> you make me go mad. You make me go mad. Go mad. Baby, baby, just 
Right, yeah, I'm not nice. joining in because I don't want to have my, my, my singing voice <laughs> you don't know the words be like recorded <laughs> forever. Uh, on the internet forever. Yeah, yeah isn't that kind of something? That. Do you guys ever stop and think about... On the floor is J-Lo. <laughs> okay. <laughs> give us a, to look it up. Give us a little bit of I that ditty. I didn't look it up yet. I'm about okay. to look give it up. Give us a taste of that ditty, yeah, once you find that. that on the floor. Oh, that is yeah. J-Lo. Yeah. On the floor. Yeah. On the floor. Pfft. <laughs> Don't stop every no, Oh, let's everywhere. get loud. God damn it. Uh, let's get loud. Wait, that is J-Lo. What did you guys think of Io Edabiri saying that J-Lo can't sing? I mean, I'd, I'd personally... I mean, you... Uh, yeah. I mean, I love Io Edabiri. Yeah, um, <laughs> I'm, never, I'm never going anti-Io Edabiri. <laughs> I was just was wondering I, what your I thoughts were on that. Is is that what she said, or was it more just like I don't understand how J Lo is famous? Like J Lo kind of doesn't do anything, which I one hundred percent agree with. Yeah, and then she felt like she can't sing. That was like the next thing. I mean, yeah, like she, <laughs> yeah, she, she. I think J Lo can perform. Like, there's no way you get sure. to where you're at without Great being a performer. Dancer. But yeah, it kind of is like, why is J Lo famous? Does me not knowing J Lo songs say bad things about me or J Lo? J Lo. <sighs> Hard for me to say. Yeah, because I feel guilty. I Why? feel like I should know J Lo. Why, no, man? Because when I think about like J Lo versus Shakira at the Super Bowl, <laughs> yeah, like that feels not even close. like that's not, not fair. But they were a good, they were a good that's combo. A nice like I, I don't yeah. feel like I was watching it like, oh, Shakira's fucking eating this up and J Lo's like <laughs> taking her crumbs. Yeah. Like I felt like they were a great duo. <laughs> yes, dude. Fuck yes. But she can't, yes. Uh, she cares. She goaded. What's like your guys' favorite <laughs> Super Bowl halftime show? We just got Usher. Bruce Springsteen. Nice. Yeah, man. Nice. Yeah. Your house? I honestly can't. Think <laughs> oh <single>. my god, <laughs> dude. Coldplay. <laughs> I think <laughs> nothing. Oh, I have no. Katy idea. Perry. Jack Harlow. One <laughs> yeah, day. Yeah, Left Shark. <laughs> yeah, come on. Left Shark was lit. Left Shark was. Wait, sick. I'm gonna look up halftime shows. Great. I'll tell you which one I think would have been. One my day, one day we'll get the JPEG Mafia halftime show. <laughs> Jack Harlow did the halftime at the Lions Thanksgiving game last year, and everyone pretty much unanimously hated it. Yeah, it was horrible. Yeah. Did you watch the game? No, I watched the Jack Harlow <laughs> show. <laughs> Come on. Uh, we guys, we live together. We're. Ra- <laughs> <laughs> You're aware of who I am, what I'm about. <laughs> You're familiar with my principles. I know your game, brother. <laughs> um. Is there any other burning things that you guys want to get off your chest? Um, let's we can talk vultures. We can talk <laughs> vultures. Did you listen, Mary, to vultures? Besides what we played in your house, uh, without you know really asking or seeking permission or anything like that. Um, Not that we should have no. to really. Well, you should. You, you should. I we guess don't ask you. permission. I'm gonna be we honest. There were some. There were some haters about that. Really? Who? Yeah. Or you don't have to say who. I won't say, but... Say who the most pronounced haters were. But, um... I can bleep it. Okay. Now you have to leave it in. And... <laughs> well, okay, yeah, well... I'm okay with that. Whatever. Okay. <laughs> I'll be and able to I, sleep at night. And I have to say, I have to say, like, they were hating about it. I Like, that <laughs> night was like, they also were so playing funny. shit. <laughs> and I was just like, oh my god, like... We set up a playlist. Can, like that was the thing is like <sighs> Katie had made a cue, yeah. and like then people just started taking over, and yeah. they in particular took over music. But then we're like, I don't like, I don't know how Spotify works. Like, uh, why isn't like why is this being weird? I was like, then don't fuck with it. Don't like, commandeer you don't, the remote. You don't need to ch- change the music. All right, all right. Like, can we let's take a, let's take some steps back because I think I don't want to I don't want to publicly be a Vultures fan. I Why? Th- okay. Well, let's just let's just let's just <laughs> let's, let's share our story <laughs> because I think you, I think you if I, to I it think like that right. whole week. Shh, 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 shh. Oh, okay, okay. Shushing I, a woman. Jesus. Yeah. Fine. Go ahead. State your say your piece. I just I just want to like I just I want the crowd to know we're we're self aware about the state of vultures and Kanye. <laughs> <laughs> and we went. You know what? The, In that context night, of anti semitism. Listen. Yes. Yes. Okay. And more than that. Misogyny, <laughs> his general. I guess it's misogyny and anti-Semitism are the That's big two. The big ones. I guess those are the big two. Uh, misogyny in the way that he's sort of using his new wife as an exhibition piece, almost to feel slimy and bad. Yeah, he's doing he's doing bad things. Okay, I mean, all right. Let's let's start from the the 
Vulture, this new album's coming out. All the all the up to this album, I'm like, I'm I'm done with him. Yeah. Like I'm I'm very much done and we, with him. I think him. we were uh, this whole house was kind of on that yeah, same but we, we were, were ready to turn right. the page no. on the Kanye phase of our lives. Well, yeah. At least I was. Yeah. And and Ben gave me this whole conversation ten beers deep <laughs> that night. <laughs> where he puts and the album on both. and he turns to me and he goes, Let me tell you what my week has been. And it started with me saying I'm done with Kanye. Yeah. I'm f- I've had it up to here with this guy. Anti-Semitism, that's a no-no. That's, a, that's, that's where far. I draw the line. Yeah. And I draw the line of misogyny. And I draw the line of, at, being, at being a bad, not nice guy. Okay. <laughs> that's nice. <laughs> that's nice. All right. So Those are so, good things to you know, say. He just, and, you know, again, it's a mental illness issue, too. It's, there's, it's, huh. there's a lot of complicated things going It's a multifaceted, very yeah. complex issue. He, and it's hard because, again, like, you, you, we've all grown up. If We've grown up listening to him. We've grown up defending him. We've grown up knowing him. Mm-hmm. And, like, it does feel like your uncle's gone off the deep end. Where, like, you mm-hmm. just, you, it's still, it's it's like a familiar person that you is, think like. About, you think about the good times. Yeah. yeah. And, I mean, you got, you and Justin are Jewish. I'm half Jewish. <laughs> <It's not. laughs> so, yeah. so, uh, so, you know, this Vulture's album's coming out. I'm like, this is going to, I think it's going to be bad. I think we're done. Like, yeah. I just, I don't, he has that one single out. He's like. I just fucked a Jewish bitch. That, that, yeah, it wasn't funny it. to me. Didn't it wasn't really cool. Like it. I didn't like it. I wasn't vibing with the song. Uh-huh. The live stream's happening. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Like, throw it on. Like, this is going to suck. First song comes out. I'm like, it's bad. I think he's lost it. It just isn't that interesting. Second song, same. Done with this. Third song. Uh-huh. <laughs> Production's pretty good. Dude. He, There's moments. There's you moments. know, the raps might not be up the par, There's but you, you can't deny, okay, Kanye still is a great producer. Yeah. Okay, we'll keep listening. We'll stay on the live stream. Fourth song. <laughs> I think that was where... I think that, everybody. Yeah, I think I, when the Backstreet sample hit, I was like, I have oh. no choice. I have no choice Dude, but to stand. All, all morals, <laughs> all, all pieces of my soul he out the window. He ate and left no crumbs. <laughs> Every bit of my <laughs> principles, every bit of what I care about out the window when I'm here. Everybody. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Fifth song comes on and it's that fact games. Yeah. Beautiful. It's right. funny. It's Floating, ridiculous. Yeah. Freddie Gibbs is coming on. It's like a bliss What an awesome verse. By the time Fitz Song comes on, like, we're standing. We're up. bought in. We're, we're parading in. around yeah. the apartment. We got the lights going. We got like we we're we've got beers in hands. I like, remember doing this a couple times. I'm back in high school. <laughs> I've I've lost I've lost any shred of moral decency. The the music is, yeah. is Yeezy's loud. Back. Yeezy's back. Yeezy's back. Yeah. And I'm not proud of that. I don't want <laughs> I don't want that to be the case. I don't I don't want this Kanye album to be hitting the way it hits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm mad that it hits the way it hits. Yeah. And I'm sorry to my grandparents. But it brings <laughs> But it brings up an important conversation of it's separating the art and the no. artist. It doesn't? Well. Well. I don't know. If, uh, yeah. Well, it, it, it did seem to be the last straw of you um, not caring about Anthony Fantano anymore. Well, I don't. Listen. <laughs> it's a conversation for another time. Yeah, we'll save it for the next podcast. We just hit the hour mark, guys. Okay. Um, I really wanted to get into the separating art from the artist debate. G- please, we have we can wait till Justin gets back. You I know? mean, I don't want to get into it. I just think it's um, you don't believe in that. I, You're not going to watch so. SNL tonight. I don't watch it any uh, night. Uh, <laughs> what's, what's um, well, thoughts? yeah, I want to hear your thought. No, I just think it's kind of hard to separate um, art from an artist because I think so much of art. Yeah, I think so much of art is tied into the artist's the context of who made it. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with that. So I think it's really difficult. I also think like particularly with comedy, uh, and this is not really related to SNL, but um Louis C. K. Mm. Sorry to ring that up. <laughs> <laughs> it was very like can't really separate the art from the artist because I think One particularly for stand up, <laughs> yeah. it's like they're telling their you, life yeah. and their beliefs and And it's, it's an act to an them. extent, but when you yeah. have jokes about just being a chronic masturbator yeah bad times it's like it's, jesus yeah dude. so it's just like it's kind of hard um and i think that is like harder to separate the art from the artist in that context and like a singer and their yeah. songs but but also kanye's rapping about that, <laughs> well, but that that's the thing where like i i agree completely with everything you said but then there's like i think everyone has then those few pieces of art that are just made by horrible people, but you can't help but love. Like mm-hmm. I have a difficult, like 
Woody Allen's a horrible yeah, I was person. Yeah, my dad still likes Woody Allen. I have movies. a really hard time saying, okay, then I hate Annie Hall. I hate Midnight mm-hmm. in Paris. Like, I hate Sleeper. Right. Yeah. And I, listen, and I'm not gonna proudly. I'm, I'm not never gonna. gonna, gonna, I'm not gonna if anyone asks me favorite directors, Woody Allen. I'm, yeah, I'm not. I'm not putting that right. At the front you're of not my going list. to not, like no. a panel to listen to Woody Allen talk. No. Yeah. But I also think if we do just as a for you and yourself, and when you're consuming things, if you're ruling out everyone who's a bad person for you and yourself. I don't. I don't know. You're not gonna. You're gonna miss. You're gonna miss some things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think yeah. As long as you have your own set of morals and right, you have a line that you won't cross. That's fine. But and I also. I like, also. Sorry. No, no, no. That was kind of what I was saying. I. I also think it also goes to like. But then those people shouldn't still be winning awards. They shouldn't still be able to make <laughs> things. They, should, they still shouldn't. Really? They shouldn't be like celebrating them, throwing them spotlights, like acting like nothing happened. Absolutely not. We still we. Every, there should be that asterisk on their record when we discuss them. We should talk about like vultures of like it hit, but it's it's a weird context. Like yeah. both of those things should be included in the conversation. I do think it was absolutely insane for Louis C.K. to win a Grammy. Yes, mm-hmm. for the album called "Sorry," <laughs> like yeah. that was nuts. But I I have trouble with like being like this guy still like you know he still has an audience nationally. Like he could like. How are you gonna can't like? How are you gonna not let this guy tour when he still would sell out theaters? Like he still has people that want to pay to see him, and you're gonna like. I, I think it's weird to like prevent someone from making a living. I don't know. I think it's weird. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't. I don't, I don't think it's weird. I don't think it's. Louis I don't think it's crazy to prevent him from making a living. I think he's gonna be okay. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Like he didn't get canceled. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah, that's right. Fair. Yeah, that's true. And that's, I guess that's probably, that's probably where the big, you know, the big hubble, hullabaloo about it all is like a little crazy. It's yeah. like he didn't get canceled. He won a Grammy and then kept rich. being mega famous. Right. Yeah. Um, damn. Well. Oof, this is, a, this now feels like a dangerous pod. We got deep. Yeah. Can we get funny again? Yeah. I don't really know what to say though. I don't really have anything <laughs> funny um, to say. Ben and I almost got lost in the woods last weekend. Ooh. Yeah. We can talk about that. How was Topanga? So fun. you went Beautiful. out there without a map. You didn't have yeah. a map in there. You just went so no. in the woods. He Davy Crockett like, I was, style. I was telling my mom about this, and she's like, "That's why you always take a map into the woods." And yeah. I was like, "Yeah, or at least correct. a compass." Mom and my parents thought you I always died. Always take a physical map with you into yeah, the woods. She actually did. <laughs> old, <laughs> old person. Um, shit. <laughs> All right. My Bulma. parents thought I died last week. Jesus, because you didn't text. Yeah, because I just. I had like the thought before we like went on the hike into the woods, of, like maybe I should like shoot a text. It's just like, hey, going on a hike today. And I was like, I like I don't. It's nah. not uncommon for me to go like yeah. days without like texting right. with my parents. And I was like, I don't want to like bother them by just being like, hey, going on a hike. And so I yeah, just well, went, I and that. then we had no service, yeah. and we ended up staying out there like literally all day. Like we probably started the hike at noon, and we ended up getting out of there at six p.m. <laughs> <laughs> and we great day. Yeah, yeah we walked beautiful. like so far. Like we'd walked like seven miles probably. And then we were heading out Four. towards an exit that we thought would put us where, where we needed came. to be or like kind of near where we were. And in that moment, I got cell service and I had like a million missed calls, texts, emails. My dad yeah. emailed me. <laughs> Snapchats. <laughs> Snap your dad. Her dad was snapping her. Your dad snapped me, actually. Yeah, yeah her dad was snapping. And Hunter. they were like, are you OK? It's so weird not to hear from you. That's and weird. I was like, is it weird? I haven't seen her. And then I called them and I was like, <laughs> yeah, no, we were just hiking all day. No service. Like, it's fine. And they're like, oh, okay, good. Like, we were getting worried. Like, we were this close to, like, trying to, like, Holy call shit. people. And they were like, we don't have any. Of, yeah, they are like, we don't have any of your friends' numbers or your roommates' numbers. Jesus. So we, yeah. like, didn't know how to find you. And I was like, well, we're all good. Turned around, walked back into the, the trail. And we were like, guys, we are nowhere near where we need we're to lost. be. We need to hike two and a half miles up a mountain, basically, to get back out. And it was, like, Ooh. 5 p.m. It's getting dark. That is a very scary feeling to be lost. I've been lost in the woods before, and it's scary. We weren't like really lost. We just like there's far away. There's yeah, we're like there's a long way back, and it's gonna get dark fast. Yeah. Damn, it would have been crazy if you guys had to sleep there overnight. Rex was really talking about it. (laughs) (laughs) Rex. 
Alex is like, yeah, we could, I, he was like, I think we could spend the night here. Like, I think we have enough supplies that like we could figure out how to like s- stay here overnight if we had to. And I was like, I really don't want to. We're not to. doing that, Rex. <laughs> no fucking way. God, I loved Rex that too. So funny. So I, had, awesome. I, had a really, I had a really like, damn. I had a really Rex. I love that. Rex day yeah you know like he's gonna like to really that. shines when there's like an mvp of the day where it's just like <laughs> this guy's just bringing awesome vibes rex is mvp he can juggle did you know that no i didn't i, I bet brought, that you I like brought that I juggling bet. balls on the hike to practice <laughs> and then i pulled them out and rex was like no way i had to learn how to juggle like in like anything. fourth grade he can rap Hamilton. Another he fucking can, another piece of the what can't he do? <laughs> Literally another layer of the onion peeled back. Another I piece know. of the puzzle falls into place. I have to pee so bad again. Well, uh, listen, guys. Getting clogged the toilet. I again. really, <laughs> I really appreciate uh, you guys coming on and doing this emergency <laughs> episode so we can stack apps. Haircut uh, episode. Haircut awesome. app. Haircut. App. Uh, Ooh, we uh, should actually have a haircut app and cut oh, someone's hair. Oh, yeah. dude, have actually I someone. That would be so That'd cool. Be that would be so cool. Okay. We're going to do that. Yep. Yay. Um, we got some sketches to film. Uh, they'll be out soon, guys. You're going to like them. If you're, li- if you're watching this podcast, if you're listening to this podcast, you're going to like the sketches that we're cooking up. Ariel's oh. here. That means it's time to fucking oh. set up for the sketch. Oh. Guys, we love you. We'll see you soon. I love you so much. Bye.